uh, I think it was a very productive week for us. Uh, you know, this is often a big game for us. LSU game is always a big game. It's turned into kind of a rivalry game uh, because of the success of the two programs. And uh, I don't think this year is really any different, regardless of record. Uh, LSU has a lot of really, really good players. Um, they have a lot of talent on their team. Um, and, you know, these guys are very capable of being one of the best teams in the country uh, because of the talent that they have. And uh, I think our players really need to respect that and make sure that we go into this game paying great attention to detail in terms of uh, playing with more discipline uh, and being able to um, execute uh, the way we need to execute to play against uh, these kinds of football players. Um, you know, LSU has uh, really good players on offense. I mean, they've got some really good receivers, uh, two really good running backs. I know they had a lot of changes in the offensive line, but those guys have improved and are playing extremely well. Uh, their tight end, um, Eric Gil Gilbert, is probably as fine a young tight end as we've seen for a long, long time. Terrence Marshall is a mismatch issue um, at wide receiver. Uh, you know, the quarterback is questionable and has been hurt, which I think has hurt them, you know, playing a, a, a less experienced guy, but very talented guy. Um, so we're going to see uh, talented players regardless, and we're going to have to play extremely well. You know, defensively, uh, I know that, um, you know, they've, they've scored a lot of points on offense. Uh, and defensively, they've got some really, really talented players, very talented guys in secondary, very athletic, athletic up front, uh, create a lot of negative plays. So um, they're always good on special teams. So I have a tremendous amount of respect for, you know, this team, the players on their team uh, and what they're capable of. Um, so our players need to be very much ready for a very tough physical game that's going to take uh, great execution to be able to be successful in. Uh, just to give you an update on Trey Sanders, you know, he underwent successful surgery. You know, our doctors and medical staff, we've got him at UAB, uh, have been on top of this. Uh, we expect him to have a full recovery, uh, but I do think that he is probably out indefinitely. Uh, there's no real timetable, but um, he's going to be okay, but pretty serious stuff. Okay, Coach, we'll start with Michael Casagrande with AL.com. Yeah, Nick, just going back two years ago to uh, LSU when Mac Jones came into the game for one play, when Tua went down, what, what do you remember about that moment? How did he handle it? And what did it say about him and his ability to step into moments that are pretty big? Well, I don't really um, remember that much about it, to be honest with you. Uh, we're kind of looking forward, not looking backwards. Um, but um, Mac has done a good job. He's developed. He's got a lot of experience. He's certainly not the same guy now as he was then. So, um, you know, this is an athletic uh, a team as we're, we've played against all year, uh, especially with what they can do in the back end and the secondary. So this is going to be a real challenge for Mac and our receivers and our upfront people to be able to uh, execute the way we need to. John Zener with the AP. Coach, I know that, that a number one ranking doesn't mean anything in November, but is it? Can it be a test of maturity and focus for your players? It's just one more thing that that could distract them if they let it, or is that just old hat at Alabama? Well, I, I do think that you made a great statement there. It means nothing at all right now, and I, I think especially in this year because it's very very difficult even at this point in the season. Uh, to know who has really established them as the most dangerous teams in the country on a consistent basis. You know, we have conferences that have played one games, conferences that have played three games, you know, conferences that have played more games than we've played. Uh, so I think it's very, very difficult um, to be able to determine that. Uh, so I think it's even more meaningless this year than ever before. Uh, but I do think you bring up a, a good point uh, that, if people get satisfied or complacent because of where they're ranked right now, that can affect their focus and ability to do, continue to do the things they need to do to improve. I've always said this before, you've heard it before, you know, complacency creates a blatant disregard for doing what's right. Uh, so, you know, that's something that uh, our players are going to have to show maturity and understanding that it's not where you are right now, it's where you finish that counts. And if you're going to finish the right way, you need to continue to 
uh, try to improve and do the things that we need to do to execute uh, even more consistently on a week-to-week -week basis. Okay, we'll go with Brett Hudson. What measures do you use to evaluate run defense, and in what ways do you think you've progressed in that regard from last year to this year? Well, I don't know that we have progressed that much from last year to this year. I think we've progressed a lot throughout this year, uh, which is what I'm focused on, and we don't really make a lot of comparisons to, okay, what were we doing last year? What were we doing this year? I mean, we're trying to take the players that we have right now uh, and do what we need to do to get them to – uh, be able to play their best so that we can stop the run and we can read run pass and, you know, pressure the quarterback when we need to and convert pass rush. So, um, and I think we've made progress uh, so far this year. Um, so, and we want to continue to try to make progress and uh, they've got some really talented backs and um, they've been able to run the ball and create balance on offense. So it's going to be important for us to be able to stop the run uh, so that we can create some positive down and distance situations for ourselves. We'll go to Charlie Potter. Hey, Coach. Uh, last week you mentioned Dylan Moses' leadership and how that's kind of coming along. Just his play on the field, how have you seen that improve over the course of the season? I think Dylan has played better and better as the season has gone along. Uh, I think, you know, he probably had to get his sea legs back under him uh, early in the season after missing one entire year of football. Uh, but I think he's much more confident now. I think he feels, um, you know, better about the, the role that he's in in terms of assuming command and leadership and making calls and trying to help other players play better. Um, so I'm very pleased with the way he's progressed throughout the year. We'll go to Aaron Suttles. I wonder what kind of progress you've seen from Jace McClellan and Roy Dell Williams from the when they arrived on campus and, and have they progressed to the point where they can play winning football and contribute this season? Uh, we, we think so. So we've been encouraged by both of those guys. They haven't gotten a lot of opportunity, you know, so far, but uh, we certainly feel like um, they can contribute and they're very capable. And um, now they're going to get a little more opportunity uh, as running backs and in some situations on special teams. Go with Chris Walsh. How has Patrick Sertain handled being sort of that veteran leader of, of the secondary this season? Well, I think Pat's done a great job. He leads by example. He always, you know, practices the way you're supposed to practice, takes coaching the way you're supposed to take coaching. Uh, I think he respects the critical eye. You know, he wants to be a good player. Uh, so, you know, he wants you to tell him how he could do things better uh, and, uh, he's very committed to being a good player, and uh, I think he's not really a vocal guy a lot, uh, I think, but in a quiet way, he impacts everybody in a very, very positive way because of the example that he sets, and uh, he is somebody that I wish uh, every guy on our team would try to emulate in terms of uh, the character that he has as a person uh, and the competitive char character he demonstrates every day in preparing for a game as well as how he plays in a game. We'll go to Alex Scarborough with ESPN. Hi, Nick. Uh, I don't know if you've had the time to sit down and, and watch Tua play at all this year, but I'm um, just wondering what your early thoughts are on the, the early start to his career at, with the Dolphins. Well, I, I really haven't had a chance to watch him, so it's not fair for me to comment. Uh, I can only tell you we're rooting for him, um, and uh, there's no one in the world that I would rather see I uh, have success uh, because of the adversity that he had to overcome to come back from an injury and uh, the great uh, character that he showed here uh, as a player and a competitor and a person uh, and, um, you know, the ambassador that he is uh, for this program in terms of uh, how he projects himself. So uh, there's no one rooting for him more than me. I'm just sorry that I don't get to watch games on Sunday. We'll go with Tony. Coach, I've got two. Uh, first off, uh, do you have an update on Brian Robinson? I know he was a little bit nicked up. And then second of all, um, how did you – what did you address your players in terms of handling the bye week, in terms of safety precautions, and in terms of contracting COVID? Was there any guidelines you passed on to them? Yeah, B-Rob is fine. Um, so I don't think there's any issues there. Uh, yes, you know, basically um, – you know, we test our players just every day, uh, as you know, 
Um, and really the guidelines that we had for our players is, look, our players have been here for a long time and they've been working for a long time. I, and I didn't really want them to go anywhere and leave their bubble, uh, but I didn't have the heart to tell them that they couldn't go home and see their family. So the one place our players were allowed to go was home. And that, that was it. Uh, if you weren't going home, then you needed to stay here and be in your bubble. Uh, and the protocol that we took is uh, we had a meeting with every player who was leaving, uh, reinforced uh, social distancing and the things that they needed to do. We gave them a packet of uh, sanitary things that would help them be able to do that, whether it's mask, uh, hand sanitizer, whatever it might be. And then we set up video conferences with, with each family uh, that they were going to go visit. And we also wanted them to uh, really understand the importance of being able to control, you know, the bubble that the players would be in when they were at home. Um, because players feel comfortable around their family, but you also don't know, you know, where, where the family members are going, uh, coming and going to. So uh, we, we really tried to educate the players and their families uh, on uh, what needed to be done and tried to give them all the um, things that we could uh, in terms of apparatus so that they, they, they would have the things that they needed to be able to stay safe. Got time for two more quick ones. We'll go with Steven and James. Hey, Coach, LSU is usually a team that takes a lot out of you, both physically and emotionally. What's been the progression of the, of the discipline on this team? Well, I think that's something that we need to continue to work on. Um, so uh, this usually is an emotional game. Uh, so players need to play with emotion but not be emotional. Uh, it always is a physical game, which is what we expect. Um, so uh, players are going to be able to have to keep their poise and their focus, and uh, they need to practice that way and develop those habits in practice uh, so that it can carry them over to the game. Okay, we'll finish up with James. Yeah, you mentioned Eric Gilbert in your opening statement, and he's become a significant part of their offense as a receiver and a blocker. What does a guy with his physical traits, uh, how, how does that affect your defensive game plan? Well, it affects, uh, I think, you know, tight ends are always a tough, um, when you have really good skill players outside and you have a really good tight end, uh, it, it's almost like you're defending four wide receivers all the time. Uh, and I think that's probably the case, you know, with, um, with LSU and the players they have because they have really good players and, you know, they flex him out a lot and, uh, he's very capable as a receiver, but he's also very capable as a blocker when they keep him in the core. Uh, so this, this creates significant issues in terms of matchups, I think, when uh, you have this kind of tight end uh, that can be vertical down the field. He's a really good receiver, uh, but he's also a very good blocker. All right, Coach, thank you. That's all the time. Thank you.